This is the Enrichment Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Enrichment Sports Source. Happy to have you with us. Glass half full. Tennessee avoided a soul-crushing loss, and Lane Kiffin was fired early this morning. <laughs> Glass half empty. It was an ugly win, and Tennessee's next five opponents are combined 17-2. and two. We'll discuss the good and the bad all, all the way throughout today's show. We start with this first segment brought to you by our good friends at Enrichment Federal Credit Union. Uh, all of you folks out there with big credit card bills uh, can save yourself money by transferring your balances over to an Enrichment Visa, Visa Gold, or MasterCard. 3.49% fixed APR for the first 12 months. Transfer a balance today, you get 12 months at 3.49%. Transfer another balance next month, you get another 12 months on that one at 3.49%. Enrichment Federal Credit Union, we talk about them every week. That's because they literally bring you this show and they bring you the best way to bank in all of East Tennessee, eight area locations. Check them out at enrichmentfcu.org. All right, uh, we have a nice cast of characters here on the set to begin with, but coming up in today's show, we also have the full crew, Chuck Cavalleras, Sterling Hinton, Will Overstreet, Bobby Scott, Mike Strange, Packed House. Now let me introduce the guys on the desk for this one. Jimmy Himes right there from the Sports Animal. Bob Hodge right there, freelancers with the Knoxville News Sentinel, former Vol defensive lineman, Shazan Bradley back with us. Shazan, thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, let's talk about this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tennessee wins, okay? They get the win, 31-24. They're three and two, which is pretty much where everyone on this desk mm -hmm. picked them to be at this point. However, it was not an impressive victory yesterday. They, they gave up a lot of points late after, it looked like it was gonna be a cakewalk. Then they kind of, through, literally <laughs> threw the game back into South Alabama's lap, uh, and everybody's kind of freaking out. There's a lot of lot of angry folks out there. Um, point blank, we'll start on this side, and we'll go around. I'll throw it out here. Point blank, is there any reason for fans to start having doubts about this coaching staff at this point? No, 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 no. There is not a single thing this season, with the exception that Western Kentucky, I thought would be the mm -hmm. close game, and they would beat South Alabama. There's nothing that's happened this season that I thought was very surprising. And, and I think so far the coaching, the, the coaching staff has made one bad decision. That was not starting Horley at Florida. Other than that, I don't think anything has gone against the script. Which was a decision that a lot of folks backed Exactly, and a lot him. of people were excited to see that when it happened. Until yeah. it didn't work. Until yeah, it didn't and then work. it was stupid. Yeah. Uh, what, is it too soon to be having any doubts, or is that fair? It's too soon to doubt the coaching staff. Uh, this team, it, I thought they'd be three and two. How they got there is a little bit different than I thought because I thought the quarterback play would be a little bit better than it is. I thought the offensive line play would be a little bit better than it is. And I didn't think Oregon would get 59 points in three quarters. So uh, those things were a little bit off in, in, in my estimation, but I thought they'd be three and two. I will say this, I, I picked them to go six and six. If they don't get better quarterback play, they won't go six and six. So I think that's one of the concerns is looking forward about where the team's gonna go. They've got to get better in several areas, but the quarterback position to me is number one. Shazan, your thoughts on whether it's fair or not to question these coaches yet? No, 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 no doubt. Um, no, no. We, um, we need to be um, very supportive, not very patient. I'm very supportive of my, my, my two young children. I support them well. They make, C, they make, they make C's and they're straight A, they straight A students. We go, to, we, we go get a whooping. If they make the A that, we're that they're supposed to make, we go to Brewster's. So it, we're, we're at a point, we're at a learning curve here with Tennessee right here. We need to be, we need to be supportive, not patient, because we all want to win. We want to win now. Do you think he's handling it the right way and trying to win now? Because clearly that's what he's doing. I mean, we'll get in. I want to save the quarterback discussion for the next segment. That deserves a little more time. But it's clear they're aiming for now rather than the future with some of the mm -hmm. decisions they're making. Uh, staying with the zone read, that kind of thing. Um, do you think that's the wise decision at this point to kind of play for the year? I mean, most athletes would say, you play to win the games, win right now. Okay. In reality, though, do you look at it and say, let's start playing for the future because this year's not going to be much? Thoughts? Well, I, I don't think there's a whole lot else they can do with the exception of something we'll talk about later <laughs> well, that's a good to, uh, yeah. to, to play for the future. I, I think you've got to play what you've got right now. I think they're doing or playing most of these guys. And I think that the guys that they're playing give them the best opportunity to win. So, so I think they're kind of doing a little bit of both of that. Um, but Tennessee doesn't have the depth 
they don't have the talent pool sitting on the sidelines. Other than that, though. Other than other than that. <laughs> other than talent and depth. You know, to be able to change much. So I think they're they're doing about what they can. I thought they came into the season having a, a, a you know, playing with a deck of fifty one, basically. What counting <laughs> flowers on, on the wall? wall. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we need to be a little bit more a little bit more explosive on on both sides of the ball. I think that's a, that's our biggest problem. We're not getting out of the hole. We're not getting in that guy's face quick enough. And one thing and one thing about it is, you know, we got we got DBs that are young, very young, very yeah. young. But if we had a little bit more pressure up front, make the quarterback a little bit more uncomfortable, make him throw off the wrong foot, I think we get more interceptions and I, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be a whole lot easier for the guys in the back. But my question is, can they be more explosive up front or are you basically seeing what they are? Well, I'll tell I you think what. They, oh, go ahead. I think they can be with uh, with Corey Vereen coming into the rotation. I think he's pretty good. And you saw Corey Miller make some plays uh, from the defensive end position that we haven't seen before. But the thing about playing for the future, you know, we had a guy that called and said, well, I don't care if they lost the game if they had to play the true freshman quarterbacks. Right. Bull. Yeah. If you yeah. lose to South Alabama. Oh, yeah, that's an, it's yeah. no win, yeah. So if you play for the future and you lose that game, then they're mad at a win. What they are they going to do if, be, if they had lost? So there's a delicate balance there, but – I, I think he's playing to try to win as many games as he can to get to a bowl game this year and try to get extra practices and all that. I think he's gearing for that. I think he feels that's very important. Shazan, you mentioned the youth. Uh, Bobby, and Bobby didn't play as a freshman. Sterling redshirted. You played as a freshman. Yes, Were you ready? We lost the first five games. <laughs> and, and on top of that, <laughs> over, uh, the first six games. And on top of that, I don't think we lost six for the next four years, three, right. four years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's – it's a it's it's a learning curve. It's an experience. You got to get in there, get your nose busted, and therefore you 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 learn to understand the game. And one thing about it is, right now is they're young. As you get older, you learn how to put this thing on cruise matic and you kind of cruise through the games. When you're young, you give it an, you give it all you got because you have no insight on terms of what's really going on. Right. Um, in terms of youth, as Chuck Cavalier, I'm going to give him credit here because he'd do it himself later. Chuck predicted before the season <laughs> they're going to play a monster number of freshmen. Obviously, they already have played a huge number of freshmen. Uh, is youth an excuse or a reality? I think it's a reality. Um, you know, you, you keep coming back to what has happened with this football team other than the quarterback play not being as good. What has happened that you didn't expect? Okay, your offensive line hasn't played as well. I don't think Daniel McCullers has been the force that a lot of people no. hope for. Mm -hmm. But other than two or three places on this team that you thought you had some strength, you're, you're really just seeing the reality is they're, they're either young and inexperienced or, sadly, they're not quality SEC football players. Okay. I'll tell you what. We're going to catch a break right there. When we come back, we're going to talk about Georgia's offense. And we're going to talk about Tennessee's quarterback situation and the mess that's right there. Should they have done something differently? Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Source. <laughs> 